There are few times when an art form completely consumes you in its world and you forget that it's just a medium. I have seen so many great films in the last few years and this kind of immersive experience very rarely happened to me. My life as a zucchini is one of the most simple yet one of the most complicated movie ever made. I have written some bullet points. Allow me to go through them one by one. As a writer, what I struggle with the most is how to write a kid's character. In most film these days, the old farts think they have a basic idea how kids or teenagers talk, but that's barely accurate. My life as a zucchini writes the fine line between the ocean of imagination and creativity a kid has and also their naive viewpoint of what real life is. This kid understands the gravity of abandonment and loneliness. Also, they talk about how Wiener explodes after sex. Like I said, a fine line between both worlds. They are all complex characters. Even the cop has a backstory subtly told in the background. The film never panders to the audience. It doesn't treat you as stupid. Take Simon, for instance, the lonely kid who hides behind being a bully. Because that's not who he is. He has compassion for others, not just the way you expect. Through the course of the film, he matures a lot. That characterization alone is worth seeing this film. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know much about animation or how it's made. But I know one thing for sure, this film wouldn't work as a computer animated film. The tone itself depends on stop motion where the emotions that the characters are going through is not shown but implied. That literally and thematically serves the plot. Compassion, empathy and sacrifice. These three elements are the pillars of this film. Isn't those ideals are a bit heavy for a kid's film? Yes, they are. And that's what's so fascinating about it. At first, Simon forces our main protagonist to spill why he is here. It seems very insensitive, but at one point we learn through nuances and compelling dialogues that Simon just wants to know out of compassion. He just wants to relate to what other people are going through. Then there's our main protagonist, Zucchini, who empathizes with Camille without even wanting to know her story. Though he does find out about it through Simon, but in the grand scheme of things, he doesn't bother Camille or forces her to tell him anything. That's sympathy for you. The most human instinct we have. Then comes my favorite part, sacrifice. One of my favorite YouTube channel is Cinema Therapy. And in a video, Mr. Therapist said, staying means nothing unless you're free to leave. That line resonated with me. The character transition that Simon went through is exactly that. Firstly, he is enraged at the idea that his friends might be leaving, but then realizes the fact that if he truly loves them, then he has to let them go. Isn't that beautiful? The movie is just 65 minutes, but all of the characters are fleshed out. That just shows the quality of the writing. Just like I said previously, it doesn't pander to the audience. It's complicated and nuanced, but it's subtle. It doesn't force you to look at things differently. It just exists as a beautiful story, almost childlike. You're smiling when the characters are having a good time. You're crying your eyes out when they are going through something. That's as simple as storytelling gets. It's the simplest thing that makes great art.